Welcome to this slightly delayed look at some new mods on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Right then, these are mods for the 7th of April. I know it's a day late and a dollar short, but hey, thanks for all the well wishes, all the kind comments and stuff for my lovely wife for her birthday yesterday. Yes, we did have a lovely evening. Um, the reason for this being very late to be released has nothing to do with me over imbibing at all. But one of the mods has taken quite a long time to set up and get running, and I've just been having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons. I will try and be as quick as I can. I know I always say that, and I don't. Uh, the updated for yesterday. I'm recording this Friday, of course. Liftable pallets and big bags by Joss. It was the liftable pallets before. Has had quite an update, uh, which includes loads of extra stuff that has now been added in that you can buy which then becomes liftable um there we go so liftable pallets and big bags so you can buy all of those things and it just means the liftable right off the start um same in here i think we've got big bags as well uh where are we maybe it's not in here oh yeah we go look liftable pallets and uh, big bags. So yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff's been added into there. That's the update for the seventh. In front of me, we've got the placeable border stones and flower pots. This is by Agra Danny. 0 0.33 megabytes download. Slots and these are ones, twos, and threes. In a little while, I'm gonna have a look at my manhole. <sighs> Such a child. Um, you'll find these all under build mode, under decoration, others, and here they all are. We start off with, we'll have a look at me in a bit more detail in a second, but cobblestone 2 metre, cobblestone 4 metre, flower pot, high border stone 2 metre and 4 metre. We've then got the lower border stone corner 2 metre and lower border stone corner 4 metre, manhole round, manhole square, water channel 2 metre, 4 metre, then rusty water channel 2 metre and 4 metre. That's all that comes to the back. So the cobblestone one that looks like that for borders, flower pot. The high ones, round and square manhole, water channel 2 and 4 metre, and then the rusted. So if you want to add a bit of extra decoration or something more around your yard, whatever you're doing, you absolutely can. Wonderful. I'm going to whiz over to... Actually, it doesn't matter which one I do next. I have got an order written down, but actually while we're here, let's go and have a look at this one. This is the Lizard 8 Bale Trailer. This is by Castor DR DS Agra Service. 4.08 megabytes download. It is two slots on console. 3,500 to buy. It's not that, this here. This is an auto load one. We haven't had an auto load one of these, I think, specifically, for quite some time, I don't think. It does say that it will pick up. Um, it does say also function will do four big, six middle, or eight small round bales so take your pick from there i did eight i had a few problems with it i'm not gonna lie the trigger for picking them up seemed a little bit it couldn't make its mind up where it was plus this turns quite tightly it can turn very tightly if your tires even slightly touch the frame it's catapult time and you end up yeah all over i don't think it has straps either you just kind of put it down as it is you'll find it under bail loaders on the end there like i said 3500 we've got a choice of auto load configuration or um on or off it's up to you standard just regular bail trailer uh, and then design color anything on that palette license plate if you want it those are your options we'll hop in we'll start it up what i'm going to do is open up that and that so operating position you watch them all just go on perfect now. Um, I was finding, there we go, from the front edge seemed to work a little bit better than most bail trays. You can kind of come from the sides and any angle you like, but there we go. It needed to be from the front. Um, transport position. You can unload bales, but unload bales here, you've got, if you drop them onto there, because there's no... Um, straps it's um it doesn't quite like it if you drop them onto the the trailer itself so you're better off really having it still in auto load but when you come to unload we've got l1 and right stick side to side up and down so we can do that obviously one set is raised that being said the few times i have done this they have settled down really nicely unload bells here having any problems with spinning off or going anywhere else or anything like that it has worked quite well 
So I say, just be aware of that catching your tyre on the side there, and you should be absolutely golden. If you go for the standard one, obviously you can stack more on top if you wanted to go down that route, but that is entirely up to you. The Lizard 8 Bale Trailer by Castor, Castor DS Agra Service. Uh, next, we've got the Horse Stable with Paddocks. This is by Sir Sim. It is eight, uh, sorry, 5.03 megabytes download. I didn't put down what the slot count was. I apologise. It holds eight horses. It's going to be pretty similar to what I put the other one, the standard in-game one, next to it. Just to see the difference between the two. Because at first glance, you think, mm, OK, I, what, you know, kind of what am I paying for? Yeah, horses are all exactly the same, but don't worry about that too much. And we come inside here, we have got a door that opens. We have got a light switch inside there to turn on lights. If you want to turn on the lights. Uh, there's no doors actually to open any of these. But your trigger for feed and for straw bedding is in here. I've said it before. Hang on a second. Yeah, dialog box is just there. But yeah, what I was going to say was be careful. Um, I've said it for a few animal pens now. Because it's changed from FS19, you can't just fill up your base food, then fill up your hay. The two combined will give the total effectiveness. So the total has a maximum limit for eight. Um, if you just fill up your base food, then you can't put anything else in because it, it, it will fill up to the maximum. It's, it's a bit, yeah, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, why it's done that. I would say for if you go for full eight horses, you want to go for about 6,000 base food and 4,000 hay. And you should be golden. And then there's all the exercise and daily riding and all that kind of stuff that you need to deal with as well. Uh, gates do open. And you'll find it under build mode and animals. I do like the white sort of picket fence around the side. It's lovely. Uh, so we go to animals, go to horses, and you will see the standard in-game one that holds eight is 118,500. And this one is 119,500. So it's an extra grand. And you think to yourself initially, well, okay, why? But looking from above, you can see... The extra grand gets you a much bigger pen for the horses to exercise and stretch their legs and you know until you come to ride them. You get these extra stools and pens around the outside here and the white fencing around it as well. Um, the, is the building a little bit bigger or is it exactly the same? Looks about the same. So yeah, for an extra grand, you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck. That's the place for uh, sorry, the horse stables with paddocks wrong place on my list. Next, <laughs> this is a bit of a sad affair, and I'm really sorry about this. The mod itself is brilliant, but this is the trailer by Train Cotton Bales Auto Load by Sir uh, Senior Vertex uh, ZT Modding and Agrotonio. 9.44 megabytes download. These are six slots each. We've got the front trailer and we've got the rear trailer. Now, obviously, you can use your, your lorry, semi, whatever, and you can just hook up to the rear trailer. Of course you can. You don't have to have them both if you don't want to. That's entirely your choice. The front one will hold nine bales. The rear one will hold 11 bales, giving you a lovely total of 22 bales. It does have a trailer hitch on the back as well. There are... What I love about this one... Um, <laughs> you know what never takes a day off? And that's auto load cotton bale trailer danger. So, always keep up with your auto load cotton trailer safety. And there's a list. It says, attention, the auto load and collision systems are very sensitive, so follow these guidelines. Do not load in places with clusters of bales. Do not make sharp turns. Do not use the belts while the bales are in auto load. For this, you need to unload the bales first onto the trailer, then you can use the straps. So, I mean, that has been fairly standard with the bales for a while. Um, don't use too many trailers. Don't use trucks with very large cabins. If the bale touches the cabin, the collisions collide. Have fun. And then it says, use auto load with awareness. Be careful out there, people. Auto load bales can be dangerous. So, anyway, the bale trailers themselves. If we go in, sorry, I know, it's, I'm just having a bit of fun. Cotton technology. Go across. We've got the trailer cotton front, 15 grand. Trailer cotton rear, 12,500. Absolutely brilliant. Combined 20, the um, options on these are identical. Um, it's just like, let's say, the different capacity on them. So we'll have a look on one, but it's the same for the other one. We've got Lizard or Continental for the options. Under Lizard, we've got Standard or Wide. Hang on. Under Continental, we've got Standard, we've got Wide. We've got Standard 2, Wide 2. 
We've got old wheels and then back to standard again, so a few different options there. Lantern position, this is to be lights on the rear. Uh, we've got design one or design two. Go from a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I went for lower because I just thought higher you might hit them and damage them. <laughs> I know it's a game, but you know. Auto loads, yes or no. So you don't have to have it as an auto load. You can manually load these as well if you want to. Lantern designs, there's a whole load of designs there for your lights on the back. Uh, then bail separators, we've got design one or design two. You don't have to have the separators, you can have it so it just loads on like that. Uh, then tension belt, no or yes, again, depends if you want to be using them. If you're not going to use them, you might not want them. Now, this is, we've got quite a lot of options here for various different things. So main colour changes one part of this. I'm going to try and pick colours you can see, right? So sort of the deck of the trailer is that. Chassis colour does the chassis. Let's go, hopefully, for something that stands out. Go red. So the actual chassis, the bottom section right underneath. Bale holders, we can change that colour. Let's go for white to make them stand out. And then we've got the side plates as well. We can change the colour on those. Did I go green already? I can't remember what colours I've picked. Let's go for what I know I haven't picked. There we go. Another one of Miss Silly P's. Lovely colour coordinations. Uh, then we've got rim colour. We've got a silver metallic, a silver metallic two, and then a range of... Well, there's a black metallic and there's a red chrome there. There's a few metallics, but and then the regular sort of choices as we go further down. Those are your choices now. As far as this is what me about being a bit pathetic. My cotton field that I've got on on my test map is there for testing anything that comes out cotton related. However, I got one bale. Hmm, twenty two. One. Never mind. Uh, what I'm going to do is. I'm not going to load this manually, but um, I just wanted it out of the way when I first bought it. Um, it's kind of close. And it's just, you know, it works. Well, there's something I want to explain about this because I say it works. It does work, but there's a little bit of a. So obviously, we can detach, attach either one, having a go about it. We want to be on the front one. We want to go to operating position, and that wasn't good. What just happened there? Now that didn't do that when I when I was practicing. Um, that's well, be careful of that. And it does say about I was only just saying about auto low bail safety and what happens. Everything nearly went to pieces. Now that's on. I can unload bales, unload bales here, and I can use my straps if I've got straps. But if I go back to lower loading platform to reset it, and then operating position. That's now back to how it was. It's just been loaded up. That's all great. You can transport them like that, no problem. The problem you've got is when you come to unload them when you get to your destination, unload bales, there's no option, L1, R1, L1 and R1, for moving that bale off the trailer and putting it on the ground. So when you get to your destination, you're going to have to unload them manually. So you're going to have to unload bales here onto the trailer, then hopefully pick it up with the thing. I think the point being they assume you're just going to take them from the field and sell them. Why would you take them and store them kind of thing, I, I guess. So there's no way of actually auto unloading them off of the trailer. Now I'm hoping, because when I did test this, for some reason, and I don't know why, even when the bale was loaded onto the trailer and it becomes a real bale again, it was acting like it didn't exist and I couldn't pick it up. And I don't know why. Maybe it, it should, should work this time. Oh, there we go, we're all right. So yeah, I mean, the, the trailers, apart from that, when it flicked around on that, was a bit dicey. All I would say is if you're going to use them, be incredibly careful. The warnings are all there. The, the, the modders are obviously aware that, you know, it can be potentially hazardous to your health. Anyway, there you go. The trailer by train cotton bales by Senior Vertex, Zeti Mudding and Agro Tonyo. Next, we've got this, which unfortunately got flung around a little bit. This is the LO LK215. There we go. This is a silage or clamp compactor. I think it's probably the best way of putting it. Um, you'll find it, weirdly, not under compactors, which I thought it would be. If we go down to silo compaction, I thought it'd be there. It's actually under levelers. I mean, either way, it's, but there it is. 5,500. It's three slots, 4.03 megabytes download. It's by Famari99. Weirdly, it says there, 80 horsepower, 3,500 litre capacity, and it will take all crop types. I'm not sure. Um, we can have standard design or no guardrail. It's up to you. We can change the main colour from red to green. 
those other two options. When you collect it, it does have, bottom right, a capacity of sorts. Now, I thought maybe you need to put water in it. I can't get water in it. I've tried from different sources. Um, I thought maybe you can put something else in it. Maybe you could put a load of crops in it, some wheat or something, and fill it up and make it heavier. I can't get it to fill up with anything, so I'm assuming that's a remnant left over from something else. I'm not quite sure why. Um, we can L1. We can raise and lower it manually. But we can do it with L1 and circle. R1 and right stick side to side. We can twist it if we want to. Don't think there's anything under L1 and R1, no. So if we straighten that back up a bit again, then we turn it on. I don't know how effective it's going to be. Let's see, shall we? Let's drop it down. Mm -hmm. Ah, maybe it should be on the front then. See, it's doing more that way. I was worried for a second then it would start filling up and that's what the capacity would be. Yes, yeah, so maybe it should be on the front. Interesting. I think it's the picture show on the front or not on the actual... Is there a picture showing it? No, it's showing it on the back. But the animation is working that way. It's compacting pretty well. Not going to lie. But it's, yeah, it's compacting better in that direction. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> Take from that what you will. Um, the LO LK215 by Farmari99. Moving on from there. Uh, next, right, this was over here. We've got the Krona Swadro 395. This by BGamer003. It is 5.08 megabytes download, five slots on console. It's 9,000 to buy. Four meters wide, you'll find it under windrow wind rowers, and the only option you've got is support wheel at the front or not. So there's no point going to have a look. It's nine grand support wheel or not, and but it does have a nice animation for unfolding some nice sound effects. L1 and then R1 and right stick side to side puts the safety rail down that side. L1. And that side unfolds it, turn it on, drop it down, drop it down, there we go. Four meter wind rowing from the Krona Swadro 395 by B Gamer 003. Lovely. Next we have got this. This is the Lizard self made tow truck. I mean, it's a bit of a chop shop job, I think, isn't it? I don't know if it would pass an MOT. It probably would pass an MOT in the UK. Um, this is by Agrotron Modding. It is 5.64 megabytes download, 10 slots on console. You'll find it under vehicles, under cars. Oh, on the end there. 35 grand, not too expensive. 300 horsepower. Slot count will come down from 10 to 1 for any subsequent one you get. We've got some wheel setup options that kind of mix and match between the standard ones and then the trailer sort of settings uh, so we're standard standard two three standard three standard four back to standard again main color changes the body of the pickup rim color is rim color and then license plate option on there as well i mean it's basically the the berkman trailer on the back of a pickup but it does the job it's got straps so you can put pallets and bags and anything else you want on there we know on FS22 when you put vehicles and equipment and stuff like that now, when you strap down, everything will strap down. L1 and X to unfold the car. Drive on, load up. And you're good to go. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's a little tow truck. Cool little extra thing. I mean, it makes it basically, it's a self-propelled trailer, isn't it, at the end of the day? But, um, very cool. no doors or anything open interior is pretty much the same as the standard pickup thing but yeah awesome that's the lizard self-made tow truck 
by Agrotron Modding. Now, we start to move on. These, I mean, I know, like I say, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from the modders or the stuff that's been done before. These are the two that I was kind of excited about. This one, wow. Um, this is the liquid manure and digestate drying. This is by Andreas K85 DS Agro Service. 7.56 megabytes download, five slots on console. It will cost you 50 grand. This will take any surplus, if you've got surplus, slurry from pigs or cows. Or, if you've been getting rid of loads of silage at the biogas plant and you've got loads and loads of digestate on hand, it will take digestate as well. 21,000 litres of each is its capacity. When you set this running, it dries down that liquid fertiliser, slurry, no, liquid fertiliser, liquid slurry, um, and digestate, and turns it into solid fertiliser. So, if you've got either of those products, it's free fertiliser. I mean, obviously, there's the cost of buying this in the first place. Um, you'll find this under build mode and under factor, uh, under production. And then uh, along to that one there, 50 grand. Like I say, once you start putting some stuff through it, what you'll save in fertilizer, it, it will pay for itself in absolutely no time. Uh, so if we go into uh, this menu and go to there, we're up the top. I'm down, I'm down a little bit because obviously I there was 21,000 litres of each slurry and digest that I put in. Now it halves it, so 1,000 in gives you 500 out because it's drying all that matter down. Same with the digestate as well. Turn those back on again. In just the time I've been setting this up, I've got 3,309 litres of solid fertiliser, which for all intents and purposes, the slurry and the digestate are both byproducts of other things you, we've been doing, you can do on the farm. If you don't want to run anything that gives you slurry or digestate, you can go and buy it, and you can buy it really cheaply. And if you buy it really cheaply and put it through this process, you're getting free solid fertiliser out of it. I say free, like I say. Once you've paid for the facilities, it's done. I mean, it's, it's, it's brilliant. So that's running. What I'm going to do, hopefully... We go under here now. Press L3. I'm so happy. I was saying the other day about the seed and the seed and fertilizer production that came out. I, was like, I love that. I love it. This. And again, I'm thinking my calms and let's play. Well, any let's plays, but my calms and let's play. I've got loads of digest digestate at the moment um, in the biogas plant. I've got a load of slurry on hand. Bang. Free fertilizer. Awesome. So that's the liquid manure and digestate drying by Andreas K85DS Agra Service. Which brings me on to the last of the mods for time. I say the last of the mods. Back in day, this would have been a mod review in its own right. Because this all comes in this pack. I've been waiting for this for a while. A few people on PC. Uh, I think did Virtual Farmer do one? I think Virtual Farmer did. Might have been Farmer Klein. So I'm trying to think. Um, got early access to this. So I've been waiting, and I didn't want to watch their reviews because I wanted to have a fiddle around with it myself. This is the Seed Potato Farm by Dazed. What amazes me is the download for this is 16.03 megabytes. How is the first thing I'm going to say. How. But it is. Um, and it comes with an absolute load of stuff. It comes with a load of potato equipment, some new stuff. We've got a power harrow with liquid fertilizer tank on the front, 1,500 litres of liquid fertilizer. So you can kind of cultivate and liquid fertilize at the same time, which you don't have to use with um, with potato stuff. You could use it with anything you want. We do have the, uh, the Grimmer GL420 and the GL860 in this pack. The reason these are modded into here is because of what that produces. So we can be using the standard in-games ones won't use what we're producing. There you see, there's your planters. And then we've got this, which is usually a mulcher, the TJP610, the TMC can can sell it. Um, this is a topper. So the toppers are normally quite narrow. So when you're doing your, 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 your crops and you have to top them, that's a, that's a topper <laughs> thrown in. Absolutely awesome. We've got two sell points, which we'll talk about in a moment as well. Uh, we've also got over here, we've got the, I'm going to get it right, the RH2460. And this is kind of a bunker, really. You can put stuff into it, and it can either go onto conveyor belts, or it can palletise potatoes and sugar beet, normally. The standard in-game one is here. 
The standard in-game one holds 13,000 litres and will give you a 1,000 litre pallet. The modded one will hold 20,000 litres and will give you a 2,000 litre pallet out of it. That's why it's been modded in. I have encountered a problem. It may just be me and something I'm doing wrong, but we will see. Then we've got our buildings. And other, I mean, honestly, it's it's awesome. I'm so, like I said, I've been so looking forward to it. This is a whole, this is a Let's Play in its own right, as well as a mod review, because the stuff you could do with it is amazing. We start with the potato shed with sorter, which is this first one here. That one on the back is an extension. So this one here, this is 13 slots, 175,000 to buy. You get the big building here, doors that open and close, as you would kind of hope. Potato sorter in here. Oh, we do have a light switch. Are the lights on already? There we go. Lights on. So potato sorters here. We'll get into all that in a minute. We come around the corner here. We've got our refrigeration units. So these are for storing your pallets of potatoes if you want to store them. With nicely marked bays so you can line them up. And the great thing is there are three different types of potatoes that this produces, that it makes. It's kind of like a wash plant sorting plant, the whole sort of thing, really. So you can put each type in each one if you want to absolutely fantastic love that to bits but now this is where I'm, i've run into a bit of an issue i'm not quite sure why it's happened this building normally finishes here at this door but with an extension which i'm going to show you in a moment the um potato shed expansion is 22 slots it's this building so this section here which if you can line it up right <laughs> extends around the side here this opens as well so you can still drive straight through and out if you want to come down this sort of corridor here we've got another door here that opens and takes you into the next section there's also the one i've gone for is the potato shed expansion with workshop also 22 slots but you get a workshop kind of thrown in as well which is around here when i placed this though i didn't get any floor i didn't get a concrete base as you can see out here in the corridor bit and not sure why um but it, it didn't put a floor down i suppose you might be able to landscape but without disabled collisions it's difficult to get into the building on console to do you can't really landscape unless i suppose you put concrete down first then place it that'll probably work um so this one being an extension is you've got the workshop if you go for it you've got three more refrigerated units we come out to the side i love all the detailing on these absolutely brilliant so that's those two buildings or three technically because that one let's say can have it standard or with a workshop but that's not all around the back we've also got a bga the bga 99 kilowatt uh that's an, ex an extension extended it says that's nine slots that's all it's not cheap but the beauty of this it's a biogas plant that will work like all other biogas plants but because it's extended it will take one of the products from here awesome then the two sell points. We've got farmer's market extended, this one here, which will take all the crop types the farmer's market the farmer's market normally takes, plus the addition of, I think it was all of the, because the three potatoes we can produce in here, you bring in your regular potatoes off the field, you put them into the sorting plant, you get waste potatoes, seed potatoes, and premium potatoes. So that sell point will take all the regular crop types, plus those three. This one is the supermarket sell point, and because it's a supermarket, it doesn't want waste products or that kind of stuff, it wants all the good stuff. So this one will take all the regular things the supermarket will take, plus premium potatoes, but only premium potatoes at this one. So, yeah, I know it's a lot to take in. Don't worry, we'll get into more detail in just a moment. And then we've got this here. This again could probably be inside, I'm not sure what's happened with the the color or texture thing on that it's gone a bit shiny again could be the port over to console i'm not i'm not sure and um, this is the potato bagging production which is four slots again we'll have a look at that in a moment so there's a lot we can do with our product <laughs> trust me there's a lot we can do with the product and it's i just think it's all absolutely brilliant so uh, let's go into this menu first if we go to our sheds first because that's where we're at We've got our potato storage expansion, potato storage expansion with workshop. 105 grand, 107,500. So that's the building at the back. That's this one here. That's the expansion. If we go from there 
up to production to factories the building there for 175 grand is the potato storage and sorting shed that's this one here at the front if we go to the right we've got the bj 99 kilowatt extended that's that at the back 435 grand that will take waste potatoes so the waste potatoes are worth the least out of all of them it's all the the, the, the stuff that's not great quality but that will take it and if it takes it and it can turn it into digestate just think what you could do with that waste potatoes from here in through that digestate from there out to this fertilizer i love the production chains i love how all this stuff is interlocking and how it's all working it's brilliant um and then we've got that was a sawmill there potato bagging production um do i say what the slot cam was on that yeah four didn't i uh, that's 37 grand for potato bagging but that is also worth its weight in gold so that's where you find all of those that's all the building oh hang on that's not all the buildings is it because we've then got um production and selling stuff selling points so we've got the two there the farmer's market and the supermarket extended expanded that one i say we'll take all your regular stuff and just check in to my right to make sure i've got it correct Farmer's Market Extended allows you to sell waste potatoes, seed potatoes and premium potatoes together with all the base crops the Farmer's Market accepts. Supermarket allows you to sell premium potatoes together with all the base crops Supermarket accepts. Yeah, so that was what those two sell points were there. Right, so that's the sell points. If we go into our vehicles menu or equipment menu, I don't think there's any options on any of these things actually, but we'll double check. We go to potato technology and we go to the end. We've got the topper there, 25,500, six metres wide. Uh, the topper is seven slots, comes down to one. The GL420 planter cedar, 46 grand. Same price as the base models, they just will, they will take um, seed potatoes. So as well as putting regular potatoes into them or seed, you can use the seed potatoes that the, the production factory is producing. That's the whole point of it. So that you've got the premium potatoes you sell. The ones that are going to seed already or aren't as premium can then be used for seeding the crop the following year. So the great thing with this is it will use everything, you know, all of the things you're producing, which is great. Um, and then we've got the GL860 compactor. Same thing, same price, no options. Um, slot count on those i think is uh, 10 and 14 for those and uh yeah they'll take the seed potatoes as well as regular potatoes and seed if you want to go down that route um what else have we got power harrows was where that one is hk25 with liquid fertilizer 17,500. no options available on that 100 horsepower required three meters wide um, that is four slots usually, which has come down to one. And then we've got, where is it? Down the bottom, under belt systems, we've got the standard RH2460, which is in, es in essence, I said it's a bunker, it's a palletizer. It can, you can either turn, you put your potatoes and sugar beet into there and it will put it into pallets or onto conveyor belts. So the modded version there on the end does the same thing. But it, um, like I say, it's a bigger capacity, 20,000 litres, and it'll do 2,000 litre boxes rather than 1,000 litre boxes. No options available on that either. I think that's all the stuff we get in the pack. I know I'm rattling through. Oh, hang on. There's a potato box under pallets. Should you require it? On the end, empty potato box, 2,000 litres, cost you 500. Slot count two for the first one, then one for any one other. It will take other crop types as it shows down the bottom there, but it's a potato box, so it's just kind of been thrown in very kindly. Now, the problem I'm having is, like I said, because of the disabled collision situation on console, I'll show you what I mean. If I go into here and we go to production, go down and we go to placing the potato bag in production. Now, some of the pictures show it inside the building, and I thought, oh, that's fantastic. But the problem is, when you try to then, I can't get into that building because as soon as I do that, the collision takes hold and it puts me outside the building. I can't get into the building. It can only be where I can visually see. So like that, where I can visually see, as soon as I get to a point where my vision goes, the collision kicks in and I, and I can't place it wherever I want. Now, obviously where it's saying as well overlaps with another object, if I toggle free mode off, top left by pressing triangle 
that will allow me to place it a little bit better, but I still can only place it where I can see, um, which is a bit frustrating, if I'm honest. But I, I mean, I, I could potentially, with a bit of fiddling around, maybe get it like against the wall there, or you know, it's not easy to do. And that's the problem I'm finding with, you know, if you've got an open shed, placing something inside it's no problem at all, but that's going to prove a little bit trickier. So that's why I just put it outside for the time being. The other thing as well is that on all the pictures that are on the, on the Mod Hub website, or all the pictures, the picture that shows it, this is inside in this gap here. So it's sitting here. So you can unload your potatoes into it, which I thought that's perfect. Makes it more automated. 20,000 litres goes into the hopper, and then it just does what it normally does with the conveyor belt, and it'll put it out of, the, out of the hopper on the conveyor belt, onto this conveyor belt, and run the production. I've tried everything. I've tried changing the position of it. I've tried moving it around, forward, backward. Um, I've tried all different settings. I, honestly, I can't get it to work. I just can't. I thought maybe if I just bring it forward a bit and I can get the, the pallets to come out of it, maybe it will automatically register the pallets and take those. Couldn't get that to work. Couldn't get nothing at all. As soon as I bring it outside, it worked perfectly. So I'm not sure. Again, it could be something I'm missing, something I've done wrong, but I have tried quite a lot of different ways of putting that in there to get it to work. So for the time being, I've got it outside. I'm producing 2,000 litre pallets of just regular potatoes. Now, I did even think about just backing the trailer in, see if there was a trigger there, and I couldn't get one. Maybe if you put a ramp here and backed up, because the trigger appears to be just over this hopper. Um, either that or conveyor belt. Uh, if you use a conveyor belt, maybe that comes up to it, or you know, you could back up, tip in front of the conveyor belt, the conveyor belt could lift into it. You know, there are some alternatives and options that could be fiddled around with to get it to work. But that all being said, regardless of all of that, don't worry about it because it's awesome. And here's for why. If we go down then to our potato sorting, so that's this bit here, potato sorting. We put our potatoes in, top right. And then what it will do, it will produce waste potatoes, seed potatoes, and premium potatoes. It will produce more premium potatoes than anything else. Then seed potatoes second, and waste potatoes last. I think of all the stuff I've produced so far, I've had one pallet of waste potatoes. I've had loads of premium, and not as many of seed potatoes. So, but here's the, the obviously, the great thing as well, which I think is just amazing. Um... The waste potatoes, as we've already seen, we can set these if we want to, to selling, distributing, or storing. I'm on storing at the moment, which puts pallets out. If I sell directly, it will sell my waste potatoes. If I've got the sell point placed, both the sell points placed, it will do an average of those prices and it will sell them. No problem at all. I can take those waste potatoes to the, the, the BGA that's part of this pack and I can sell them there. Fantastic. The seed potatoes, again, I can sell them if I want to or I can use those in the planters for the next planting process. So, or I can, you know, so sell them or use them for that, absolutely no problem at all. The premium potatoes, well actually those as well, sorry, yeah. The premium potatoes, they are the chef's kiss, creme de la creme. So, as far as prices go, we'll have a look at the prices in a bit more detail, but waste potatoes, the price is minus 70% because they're not great. Seed potatoes, the price is no change. They're standard, same as regular potatoes, pretty much. Um, premium potatoes are plus 40%. So the price you get for premium potatoes already is 40% higher than the standard potatoes, which is great. If you bag them by using the potato bagging, which we've got outside, if you've got bagged potatoes, the price then goes up um, to plus 63%. So it's well worth either just taking your premium potatoes and selling them or bagging them as well to get that elevated, that boosted price. Now you can take your seed potatoes, as you can see here, and you can bag those as well. Seed potatoes bagged will give you a 12% increase in price as well. So there's a lot of options and variables we can be putting into play here. So what I'm going to do is, I should have done it from there, I'm going to turn that back on the potato sorting. As you can hear, fairly loud. Uh, I've got 1,749 litres in there, and it's pretty quick. As you can see, um, the seed potatoes is going to be the next one that's full. But if it gets to the end and there's no space for it, it will just sit. Everything kind of will grind to a halt. Because at the moment, I've got one pallet of premium potatoes. The premiums have 45 plus on it. 
I've got 35 to 45, which is your seed potatoes there, and I've got one of the waste potatoes, which is minus 35. Now, it will produce, if you've got it all turned on, it will produce all of those all the time. Wherever there's a gap, whichever one is full next will come out. So it's not like that one is always for premium, that's always for seeds, and that's always for waste. These pallets will spawn wherever there's a gap here. So you remove them, take them out of the way. I'm just thinking that's now gone over, hasn't it? So if I move one of those out of the way, you'll see that another seed potato pallet, 35 to 45, will appear. So what I need to do is, as you can see, I've got a few of these already. Um, And the reason I said this has taken a while is because I have been having just the best time. I know it's ridiculous, but just driving the forklift, just going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Yes, I know people will want to probably automate it a little bit more. They might want to decide, you know, I, I don't want to have to do this all manually. They want it. And I'm sure people will find all sorts of clever ways of using conveyor belts and pallet pushers and all sorts of stuff to get this to work. I'm, I'm just... Honestly, loving playing with the forklift truck and moving stuff around. So, what should happen? This other pallet should appear. There we go. It's just appeared. Should be a 35 to 45. There we go. So, as you can see, they will just appear wherever, wherever there is a gap. So, look into our production again. Now, it's the premium potatoes that go the quickest. So that will probably fill up because the waste potatoes do take quite a long time. And then when that runs out, I just need to stick another pallet in. Or like I say, use conveyor belts. I've put one there for the moment just to, to be by the side, um, which will kind of bring us on to the bagging as well. We'll have a look at the bagging in just a second. I'm just gonna put this now, obviously, I've put these th out here to make it easy to see, but also for the thumbnail. Um, but what I would be doing with these now, my waste potatoes, my seed potatoes, unless I'm all automatically selling them, I would put them around in my refrigerated units. That's the whole point of having those refrigerated units, is to pile up your pallets. So if I take this pallet of regular potatoes, like I say, there's no trigger here, and I thought there might be a trigger in front. I'm finding the trigger is directly over this chute, which is about there, there you go. Pallet's going down, that's going up. Pallet disappears, and you can see the premium potatoes, they're flying up, so they're going to be done again in a moment anyway. So, yeah, it's more for me, it's the problem of keeping that more automated. I don't mind doing it with, with this, but it, you can't free yourself up to do any other jobs while it's doing that because it, it's just a constant cycle. You are, you are just, I'm literally taking pallets from here out of my palletizer, putting them there, that's filling up, I'm moving pallets from there, another pallet from there, and I'm just going around in a circle. Which, like I say, I don't mind, but I'm pretty sure people will want to do something a little bit different. So, the, the bagger, which will bag seed potatoes or premium potatoes. I have got a premium pallet up there. The only downside to this is that is very tight for getting a pallet in. You have to be incredibly precise. But when they're bagged, they will look like this. So, we get our premium 25 kilo... Um, there's, I think it's 1,000... 400 litres on this pallet. If I move this out of the way, it should start the next pallet because as it stands, if I go to my um, bagging station, right hand side I'm full, 6,000 litres, but also I've got one in the way, so that needs to be moved. I haven't brought any seed potatoes into it yet, which I suppose I could do next maybe. Turn that back on, move that out of the way. There you go, next pallet appears. <laughs> Can I get to go any further than that? I why. Okay. Well, that's not great. Um, it's probably just it's probably just my forklift operating skills. Uh, so yeah, so that will that will bag those until that pallet runs out, or what's in storage runs out, and then what I'll have to do. Curious. 
well, why not the pallet hasn't appeared there? Oh, there you go, it's just processing now. So yeah, those premium potatoes are going to keep chugging away until the pallets all formed. But these pallets are, are worth loads. I was going to try and show you putting the pallet up into there, but the problem is it hasn't got to a point where it's, it's taken from there yet. Never mind. But that, that, like I said, that's where it goes. As you can see, it's a pretty tight fit. If that didn't have the roof on that, they'd go in a little bit easier maybe. The sides are quite tight as well. It, it literally just fits in there. But it's, yeah, I mean, the whole thing is amazing. I, I'm i sure people will comment and say what I've done wrong regarding the um, the placement of this, whether I'm honestly, hand on heart, I've tried everything. Even if you say to me, oh, yeah, you push your right into the corner, it works. It hasn't for me. Um, you know, or you go into the corner and you, you know, you put it on to overloading. I tried that, wouldn't overload either. I, I just could not get it to work. Um, but I'm not bothered. It's, it's not like I'm going, well, if that doesn't work, I don't like this. I think it's fantastic, the whole thing. Um, I wasn't going to show. I wasn't going to show these. I mean, they're planters. They, they plant the potatoes. Um, that's a topper. I suppose I could show the topper being used. Um, I don't know if one should be in front of the other or behind the other. But anyway, the production is chugging away. My potatoes are being produced. It's all very good. Might as well. I'm just conscious of time. We might be all right. Uh, so, what I wanted to show you as well, yeah, that's full now because I've left the pallet there. Uh, and that's, yeah. So, all the storage is full on both. I need to move pallets out of the way for that to carry on running. So, I'm just going to turn those off for the moment. But as you can see, my fertilizer production is cracking. I've got another 2,000 litres already. So, that's, that's amazing. I'm really impressed with that. If we go up to our prices, and we go and look at regular potatoes first. So, oh, if we just get our potatoes off the field and we go and sell the potatoes, we're looking at around 410, 411, 417. So, around that, that's not too bad, standard price. If we go to our prices for our waste potatoes first, and you'll see why you're better off, you know, say, using them at the biogas plant or something like that. So, the waste potatoes, 115. It's not not brilliant um like i say you take a bit of a hit the seed potatoes should be about the same sort of price as regular potatoes 396 400 they're a little bit lower than we've got prices that we're being offered but it's around it's a ballpark figure 410 417 400 just around that the premium potatoes though 537 568 565 potatoes and then we've got the uh potato bags which are even more six seven six six five six so you can see the increase and the the reason why the separation of these is brilliant i love that and the fact there's things we can do with them as well now but the difference between a premium potato and the bags premiums you know it does make you think well it's worth doing it why not i'll, I'll, I'll do a load of those you might not you might think it's, you don't don't like potatoes at all i think this pack has made potatoes far more interesting far more relevant um, not that they've necessarily been lacking or anything, but we've had the same, pretty much the same potato gear for a while now, and that really does change things. I'm, I'm, I think it's brilliant. So what we'll do is let's turn on the front one first. So power harrow. Probably the worst ground to do that on. Do that one. There we go. So power harrow. So we'll do your cultivating and it's fertilising at the same time. So that's the front. That's absolutely brilliant. That's part of the pack. Yeah, use it with potato stuff, but you don't have to. I mean, it's quite an extensive... I was going to say, it's not. Even if you say to yourself, I'll download that. I'll download the potato production pack because the download of it is 16. Did I say it was 16? 16.03. It's not like it's a 150 megabyte download or something. 16.03. I don't honestly don't know how that's possible. But, but it is. <laughs> and it works. Um, have I got potatoes? I know I shouldn't be driving over them. I've got... Um, 
crop destruction off, but if we switch to the back. There we go. So we are topping our potatoes. Now, if you've got a potato harvester that does the topping for you, that's great. Generally speaking, toppers are quite narrow. This one isn't. So it's a nice addition. The fact they've taken the, the mulcher and made it into a topper. I haven't tried it on the front. Um, if you've got a tractor with narrows on or something like that, it wouldn't be a problem anyway, I suppose. But I think it's supposed to run this way. And there we go. We're topping our potatoes. Using the TMC Cancella TJP610. And, um, you know, I may have missed something, and I apologise if I have. I'm looking down my list. I don't think I have. And I know I've rattled through a lot of stuff, and you might want to pause and replay certain bits. Um, but that's the seed potato farm. Like I say, I just think it's added so much. And, again, I'm going to reiterate the fact that a few things I've talked about in the last few days, mods that have come out, the fact that so many of these mods, the production chains and things that we've got are now all interlocking. You know, that you can produce one thing which will help another thing. We, we knew that was going to be the case with the production chains they first showed us. But where modders are going with this now, that ability to produce one thing, which you can use for another thing, when you add it to something, you know, free fertiliser, you're making your own seed, you're doing pig food, because you've produced this, you've done this. You know, this production pack here, we're getting really good prices for our premium potatoes. We can use the other ones for doing our seeding again, but the waste isn't wasted. We can use it for other stuff, you know. If you're going to have a biogas plant anyway, why not use this one from the pack? Again, having the pack downloaded and installed is not going to break the bank. Um, so when you're taking your waste potatoes there, you're getting digestate and you're making money from the methane and the electricity it's producing. So it's it's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, I don't know. As you can tell I'm excited about that. I, I, I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I really do. Yeah, very cool. So there we go. That's by Dazed. Cracking job. Two thumbs. Way, way up. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.